Hey guys, all right. Another quick one, and the one after this is gonna be a, a longer lecture. Um, but this is just as you're going through all this action potential stuff and neurons, and I wanted to give you a couple of analogies that when I talk about these things in, in a, or when I did talk about them in a normal class, uh, some students have said these analogies kind of help them understand uh, and, and remember some of these basic um, ways in which neurons act and, and work you know they kind of represent some some basic principles that we see in other parts of life uh, and so by forming these connections maybe it'll just help you kind of think about it so let's jump into the first one of these analogies and that is twitter um, if you think about something you know social media and you think about something like twitter this analogy won't be perfect and, uh, and i'll explain some of the imperfections but in a sense if you imagine my twitter account um, Here's me over there, and that's sort of like the cell body of an axon, okay? I am the one that's going to make decisions about what I choose to do or not do with my Twitter account. Now, those decisions may be based on um, things I read. So there are the people who I follow, and they are posting certain things that is influencing me, and, and they are like the dendrites. Right? They, they're the information coming in to the cell body from the outside world. And, and let's imagine for a moment to make this analogy work, that's the only information I have. So I'm not, I'm not gonna repost something from a website or whatever. Imagine the only things I know about are the things I learn about from those I follow, my dendrites, because that's the truth of a neuron, right? All it knows is the information that comes into it. Um, occasionally, uh, when this information comes in, it might excite me enough over some issue. You know, maybe I read enough posts related to some issue that I decide I want to make a statement about that. This input has, has stirred me up has excited me and I am now going to post something. If I post something, that's like an action potential that goes and if we think of Twitter again, well, it goes to the people who follow me, right? Um, and, and so this is like the cells that I interface with when I release the neurotransmitter from my terminal buttons, right? At the end of the axon, release that neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Just want to use some of these words so you start to feel comfortable with them. Um, then I might stimulate other cells who are following me. And so there I'm sitting in the middle. I'm being influenced by some and I'm influencing others. Uh, and that's how a single neuron works. But if we take this Twitter analogy sort of one step further, of course, there's a ton of people with Twitter accounts and we're all interconnected in complex ways. You know, I am just one neuron doing my thing in this complex network of Twitter connections. So for example, um, some of the people who follow me might be people who you follow. Uh, and so if I send something that excites one of them, maybe along with the other information, uh, they get enough so that they now send something that could reach you, right? My action could reach you or vice versa. You could be one of the ones I follow. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, things you post could influence me to post or not. And so if we now imagine, you know, all of the, of the Twitter sphere out there, all of the people as individual neurons that are in these weird ways interconnected where certain people have, have a potential to influence other people in these complex ways. That is basically the structure that the brain uses. It is essentially like a complex social network, except it's not a social network, it is a neural network. Uh, and we use that term quite often to describe the brain. Uh, so I thought, you know, that might help you just kind of wrap your head around sort of how this sort of structure can lead to, you know, information moving around a system in a very powerful and dynamic way, just like information moves around Twitter in a powerful and dynamic way. Okay. So again, the analogy is not perfect, but I'm hoping that'll help. Now, one other thing I wanted to, to kind of stress, and this is really with respect to the action potential itself. So let's begin by just watching this for a moment. If we can. So this is just, this is in Mexico, by the way. Apparently it's Mexico's biggest wave, and we have this wave of humanity coming. There we go, we really wave. Sorry, I should have. I missed my miss <laughs> Okay, so there we have the wave. And um, yeah, we don't care about this uh, uh, 
Oh boy, going viral. All right, here we go. Um, when you think about those sort of sports waves and how they happen, um, yes, in reality, you're watching ahead and you're seeing this wave coming uh, and preparing yourself to do your thing. But let's imagine you're not because you don't have to. We could tell everybody in the stadium, hey, listen, very simple rule. If the people beside you stand up, um, and then you stand up. And when they sit down, you sit down. And that's all, that's all you need to know. That person to the, the right of you, if they stand up, you stand up. If they sit down, you sit down. Okay, now that is all we need to get a wave going. Because as long as a bunch of them, we, well, no, to get, to get it going, we need to initiate it somehow, right? So there has to be like a line of people somewhere that all are coordinated and stand up. But once that happens, now the next people to them will see that and stand up. And when the, the first one sit down, they will sit down. And this would continue all the way through. And so the point of that being, you know, that we can have this cascading effect. And, and what I'm alluding to here now is the way a signal travels down an axon. And, and the textbook will talk about these ion gates opening and closing and letting um, charged particles in and out of the neuron. The real net effect of that is these open enclosures and, the, and that sort of electrical um, uh, change that happens travels down the neuron in a very local way. If something happens, you know, just a little further up the neuron, that opens a gate where I'm at, and that changes what happens here, which changes the next step along the way. Uh, and so then we have this action potential flowing down the axon, much like a wave flowing down, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the flowing across the crowd here. So it, it's just an example of how, you know, really the brain is very simple. Neurons send a signal or they don't. And by the way, I don't know if this was stressed, but there's two kinds of signals a neuron sends. Either an excitatory signal, which where it's sort of telling that next neuron, you should fire, you should fire, you should fire, you should fire. Or an inhibitory signal where they're telling the neuron, don't fire, don't fire, don't fire. Uh, and so, you know, if we kind of, I'm, I'm stepping back here for a moment, but let's step back here. If we imagine, you know, what's actually going on here, it's like a bunch of, uh, of these people I follow are telling me, send a tweet, send a tweet, send a tweet. And a bunch are saying, don't send a tweet, don't send a tweet, don't send a tweet. And I basically, what I'm doing is adding those all up. And if there's enough, you know, extra people telling me to send a tweet, if, if that outweighs the don't by enough, that's the computation that's being made, very simple computation, um, then I will send a tweet. And what I'm referring to here is how that action potential goes down. Ultimately, I release a neurotransmitter. That neurotransmitter is either going to excite or inhibit those cells that I interact with. Um, and, and so it's a very simple, you know, even the traveling is, is a very, everything's very simple, sort of yes, no gates, um, very easy decisions, summing some input relative to a threshold. And if it's bigger than a threshold, I fire. And even when I fire, I'm just opening a local gate, but that's enough to start this chain reaction all the way down the axon. And then I ultimately influence the next cell uh, in the network. Um, so, you know, this is what makes the brain so freaking cool. It's not complicated. It's a simple system, but just like Twitter, which is a simple way of connecting human beings, the richness of the connections can cause some really cool stuff uh, to happen. Uh, and all of our all of our fancy behaviors, you know, even my weird hand rolling stuff like this, uh, is all a highly coordinated use of this neural network uh, that can, you know, at, by very small local decisions can make these global patterns of behavior happen. Uh, and it, you know, it sometimes feels like magic to me of a sort, like, wow, how does that all work? Well, you know, that's what psychology is all about, trying to figure it out. And, and this chapter, we're at the, at the brain level, the neuron level. Uh, and so that's the story there. Okay, so I hope those analogies will help you. I will see you at the next lecture. Bye-bye.